Hey everyone, it's Lee with Mantis Mechanics and just a few weeks ago I released a video on martial arts or fighting versus self-defense and in today's video I'm going to give you some tips that you probably haven't heard before and the best thing about these techniques is they're not really techniques, they're things that you could do right now that could end up saving your life, so stay tuned. My number one tip for self-defense, and I talk about this all the time in self-defense classes, is footwear. I live here in South Florida and flip-flops are the norm here and I never wear them unless I'm at the beach or hanging out at by, the, by the pool. I do not wear flip-flops because I can't move very well in flip-flops. In fact, I work in private security sector and some of that part, the part of that is reducing liability and when people slip and fall in a shopping center or a public place, the first thing they tell us to do is take a picture of their shoes. If they're wearing open toe sandals, the case almost always gets thrown out because they're not considered a very sturdy shoe. So my advice to you is wear a shoe that you can move in, you can jump, you can run, okay? You don't have to be able to run at your fastest or anything, but something that isn't gonna trip you up. Because a sandal or a flip-flop is probably going to trip you up if you have to go in a, in a self-defense situation. If there's an active shooter and you have to run out of there, being in flip-flops is not ideal. Have you ever tr get in a pair of flip-flops and try to run as fast as you can? It's not going to be very good. In fact, don't do that because you might trip and fall, and I don't want to be responsible for that. I hold no responsibility if you decide to run with flip-flops on. Okay, that's a legal disclaimer right there. I don't care. I'm not paying you anything. I don't have any money anyways. Just don't run in flip-flops. So wear something that you're going to be able to move in. I know that flip-flops are convenient. You can just throw them on and walk out the door. But take the extra two seconds. Put on some socks. Put on some shoes. That's my self-defense tip number one. Number two is carry a small flashlight. A lot of people think about when they think about self-defense, they think about weapons. They carry these, you know, little keychain things that, that is to stab someone in the neck. They carry a firearm. They carry pepper spray. And yeah, those, those things are, are, are good. You know, you can carry those, but you need to train extensively with those things. You know, you can't just expect to carry, you know, a pair of nunchucks and that's going to protect you. And in fact, nunchucks is a bad example because they're illegal to carry in most states on your person unless you're going to and from. A martial arts class so something like a, a firearm you're going to need a lot of training with pep even pepper spray you need to train with that or a flashlight you don't really need a lot of training with that and you not only can you use it you can use it to hit somebody obviously if it's a small one they have those tactical ones that have those little ridges or whatever okay that 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 might cause some damage to to a attacker when i push it i want something 300 lumens it's actually very bright so it can temporarily disorient a, an attacker or would-be attacker. It also, the number thing, one thing I like about the flashlight is it can help you detect danger. Maybe you're walking out to your car late at night and you decide, hey, maybe there's someone under my car. Hit, I take that little flashlight, little flashlight like this, 300 lumens, boom, from 20 feet away, I can shine it underneath my car. Oh, there's nobody underneath my car. Or if I'm going in a dark alleyway, boom. And the worst thing that happens if you shine a light in someone's face is they're going to be temporarily discomforted, right? It's not a huge thing where if you shoot someone and they're not attacking you, you're going to jail. Same thing if you just decide, hey, someone's walking next to you and you pepper spray somebody. That's not a good idea, okay? So I love the flashlight. Carrying a flashlight with you is one of the best things you can do. And you're going to use, find out when you carry a flashlight, you're going to use it a lot more often than you think. And some of you might be saying, well, I have a flashlight on my phone. The problem with that is it's kind of cumbersome to get out. You got to hit the thing. And it's also not that bright. I want something 300 lumens. I want something that's going to throw a good beam. They have the ones that flash. I don't think that flashing helps you versus a uh, solid beam. I, I, I don't know the science on that. Maybe there is some research on that. But to me, the flashing is just kind of a gimmick 
Just get something that's powerful, going to throw a beam, and something compact. You can buy them on Amazon for less than $10, or you can go out and buy a really nice one if you're so inclined. But get a flashlight. The next one, when you're out working out, you're running, or maybe you're just walking down the street, don't wear noise-canceling headphones, okay? I see this all the time when I'm riding my bike or if I'm going for a run. I wear headphones that actually leave my earlobes open so I can hear around. They, they, they conduct the music through the bone. The ones I use are Trek Titanium, but there's, there's a lot of them out there. They go through the bone, so my ears are still open, so I can still hear what's going around me, and I don't listen to my music blasting into my ears where I can't hear anything. I want to be able to hear if someone's coming up behind me. I can't tell you how many times I've been running, and I'm running behind somebody who's wearing these big noise-canceling headphones, and I, you know, say, on your left, and I'm running, and they have, they didn't hear me, and when I passed by them, they had no idea I was there. They get scared. In fact, I had a buddy who was wearing a pair of noise-canceling headphones. This guy had been practicing martial arts for quite a while. He was wearing them. He was running down the street, not paying attention. Somebody ran up behind him, punched him in the head, and guess what they stole? They stole his $300 noise-canceling headphones. So to me, like the Apple AirPods, I know those are they're, those are convenient. I know they're good, and, and, and there are places for wearing those. But when you're working out or you're in a public place, if you're just walking around, stop it with the noise-canceling headphones. Use something else where you can actually hear or turn those to a volume where you can still hear around you. So that's my third tip. Let's move on to the next one. My next tip is armored trucks. Okay. When you see an armored truck parked in front of a grocery store or any type of store, just wait till they leave to go in. It is unbelievable how many times those trucks are hit. I've known a lot of guys who have worked for an armored truck company and they have stories for days about people trying to come up to them and take their money. And I know a lot of people in law enforcement who will not enter a building if there's an armored truck out front. So if there is an armored truck, let's just say, to keep it safe, I'm not going to go in until that truck is gone, or maybe I'll just go somewhere else. Just when there's an armored truck, go the other way. My next tip is sit with your back to a wall. When you go to a restaurant or a public place, you want to sit with your back to the wall and you can see the entrance. When I walk into a restaurant or walk into any place, when I come in, I walk in, I look at my table, and I always try to sit with my back to the wall, and I also make note of other exits. So as I walk in, there's the entrance. I'll look, I'll see, hey, there's the emergency exit. And I just make a note of it. I don't, I'm not really like anal about like, hey, oh my gosh, if something, if somebody attacks me, I can go for that door. What it is, is I go, I look at that door, and I say, okay, that's plugged into my mind. So if something were to happen, I would start to look around and be like, oh, the door, oh yeah, it's over there. Instead of something going on and being, where's the door? And then also I'm looking at the entrance so that no one comes in. If someone comes in that looks suspicious or, or uh, looks like they don't belong there, right? I'm going to make a note of that. I might not necessarily get up and leave or I might not do anything about it, but I'm just going to make a mental note. I'm watching the people as they come in. Now there's a famous story with Bill Hickok and Deadwood, South Dakota that he always sat with his back to the wall and then one day he was going to play a card game and he said hey I need to sit with my back to the wall and I guess his reputation had kind of declined at that point and they kind of just said no we're not moving for you uh, before you know I, earlier in his life if he had asked somebody to move they would have just moved because he had that type of reputation but in this case he didn't move and that day, as legend goes, he was shot in the back of the head. I always, and, and again, law enforcement will always try to do this. If you look at, if you ever go into a restaurant and there's law enforcement there, usually you're going to see, if it's law enforcement and someone who's non-law enforcement, you're going to see the law enforcement officer sitting with their back to the wall looking at the entrance. Or if it's a bunch of law enforcement sitting together, you're going to see the senior officers, usually whoever's got more seniority, sitting facing that, you know, that entrance. So 
That's my five tips for you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What are some self-defense tips that you have or situational awareness tips that you have that aren't necessarily techniques that you can use to protect yourself? Let me know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe for more, and we'll see you next time here on Mantis Mechanics.